Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Hamas unleashed this terror. That's what President Biden reminded everyone at a Holocaust remembrance ceremony yesterday. Well, at the same time, the president's administration is withholding weapons that would help the Jewish state defeat Hamas. CBN's Chris Mitchell reports on the increasing tensions between the United States and Israel. In the face of U.S. pressure, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu explained why the war cabinet approved its operation into Rafah. Seizing the passage in Rafah today is a very important step, an important step on the way to destroying the remaining military capabilities of Hamas, including the elimination of the four terrorist battalions in Rafah, and an important step to damage the governmental capabilities of Hamas, because as of this morning, we denied Hamas a passage that was essential for establishing its reign of terror in the Strip. The White House, which is strongly opposed an invasion of Rafah, says it's monitoring the operation. What we've been told by our Israeli counterparts is that this operation last night was limited and designed to cut off Hamas's ability to smuggle weapons and funds into Gaza. Now, our views on Rafah have remained the same. On Tuesday at the Capitol Hill ceremony to remember survivors of the Holocaust, President Joe Biden condemned the recent rise of anti-Semitism and the Hamas massacre on October 7th. Now, here we are, not 75 years later, but just seven and a half months later, and people are already forgetting, are already forgetting that Hamas unleashed this terror. It was Hamas that brutalized Israelis. It was Hamas who took and continues to hold hostages. I have not forgotten, nor have you, and we will not forget. Also on Tuesday, the Biden administration confirmed okay, it's withholding a large shipment of 2,500-pound bombs, fearing it would be used against Rafa. Republican you Senator Lindsey Graham blasted I, that I, decision I on Fox that. News. This is the worst possible signal to send to all the bad guys that America would be withholding weapons and ammunition to the Jewish state who's under siege on multiple fronts. That is just inciting more violence. Israeli journalist Gaddy Taub tells CBN News it comes while Israel is fighting for its life. And they are now holding us by the throat because they are withholding ammunition from the IDF. So Israel needs to fight this war. If it is to survive, it will need to fight more wars because it would need to break the noose that Iran has been constructing around us. And the United States is protecting that noose. The U.S. still believes a ceasefire can be worked out between Israel and Hamas. Today, CIA chief Bill Burns is expected to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. This is the time for everyone who loves freedom, for everyone who loves liberty, whoever, everyone who believes in freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly. It's time for all of us to stand up and say this kind of terror cannot last. It cannot be in the world today. What Hamas has vowed to do is another genocide. They have vowed to wipe out the state of Israel. It's in their founding document. They did it. They tried to do it on October 7th. They failed at it. But then they vowed we will do this again and again and again and again until Israel doesn't exist anymore. Let us please take them seriously at this and, and say the, Israel is a democracy. In Israel, there's freedom of religion. They're not an apartheid state. They're not bent on genocide. What they want is peace with their neighbors. What is happening is the truth has been turned upside down, and somehow Hamas is the victim? Are, you've, you've got to be kidding me. So in that, are we in a battle of ideas? And the answer is yes. In that battle of ideas, can we please stay firm and not send these mixed messages? Hamas is obviously skilled in public relations, obviously skilled in fomenting things on the Internet. They believe if they repeat apartheid state and they, believe they repeat genocide, they repeat these things again and again and again, somehow it will convince people that that's actually true when it's absolutely the opposite is true. 
They're the ones bent on genocide. They're the ones bent on not an apartheid state, but a complete elimination of the Jewish people in the land of Israel. That's what they're bent on doing. Let us please stand strong. Don't send these mixed messages that if you just wait long enough in your tunnel, uh, America is going to come to your rescue. If you foment even more disturbances on our college campuses, uh, we're going to stand down. We're not going to stand with Israel. Let us resolve firmly. We stand with Israel. We stand for liberty. We stand for democracy. We stand for freedom of religion. Hamas doesn't stand for any of those things. They got elected, yes, but after they got elected, they canceled all future elections. If you want to say they're an occupied territory, your facts are wrong. Israel withdrew from Gaza in 2006. They are not an occupied territory. Israel withdrew from the West Bank all the way back in 1994. So there are signs now as you try to go to Bethlehem or you try to go to Ramallah or Hebron, there are signs up that if you cross this line and you're an Israeli citizen, Israel cannot guarantee your safety because they don't let their forces cross that line. Let's realize who's really at fault here, who really started it all. And please let us stay firm in our commitment to Israel.